There are so many different approaches to audio description. Everyone has their own path. And what thrills me is that each person is carving their own approach and their own path in a way that works for them. This is Zach Seidman. Hi, this is Roy Samuelson. Welcome to the ADNA Presents. We're very happy to have Zach Seidman featured today. He is an audio description narrator, an AD narrator, and a voiceover entrepreneur. Thanks for joining us, Zach. Thanks for having me, Roy. How's it going? Hey, I'm doing great, man. It's great to meet you. And this has uh, been a long time coming. So thanks for having this happen. Absolutely, man. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> yeah. Well, first question, what you love about audio description? Tell us. Oh, man. <laughs> it's kind of a few things. But I think initially, I saw it sort of like Ron Howard from Arrested Development, obviously not like super played up, but like, you know, you're kind of just connected to this story that's going on, but you're not obviously dominating what's happening in the scene, but you're still just guiding people through. And I like that. I thought that was kind of a really neat perspective, you know, that I didn't know existed, but I was like, you know what? <laughs> this is great. <laughs> great. I love the comparison there. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> I love how you said you're connected, but you're not dominated. And the Ron Howard comparison made me laugh. I was on mute. It sounds like you bring some skills to audio description from other genres of voiceover that you work in. Is that something that you'd like to talk about? Or uh, do you want to talk a little bit more about what audio description means to you? I could do both. Yeah. So initially, it was the performance aspect of it that I was really interested in. And then I started to learn more about the blind and low vision community and just their wants and needs for taking in films and TV and whatnot. And so I think that aspect of your sort of assisting that community sort of made it a little bit more powerful than even just, you know, normal voiceover. And then I do narration. So I think it's actually helped me a lot in that aspect of my voiceover. This is similar in that way. So one of the things that I love hearing about voice talents like us that work in audio description, we're able to take some of those skills from audio description and kind of use them in other aspects of voiceover. And it sounds like that's something that you're able to do too. Could you talk a little bit about maybe some of the similarities and differences between audio description narration and some of your other work and maybe how they help each other or how they might be a little different? I think a big portion of it is the reading aspect because there's a lot of text when you do audio description. So it almost feels like it's a warm up to what I'm doing in my other work. So it's like I can go in I can do an episode and then it's like I'm warmed up for the day and then I can go to my auditions and any other work that I've done. I kind of like it because it's not super vocal straining or anything. You're not screaming. He walks into the. Exactly. Yeah. There's no shouts or efforts or anything like that. So there are times where maybe you could speak to this as well, where you're really invested in the script and you want to make sure you get every sentence right. And it's like there's these moments because you're thinking of the blind community and you're also thinking of your performance and you have a couple different things going on. So there's like, man, I could, you know, I could take that sentence again. I could do this again. So you find yourself saying and maybe, you know, you just woke up. So you're, you know, you got clicks and all that stuff. So you're kind of working through it. So then I guess it can kind kind of be a little taxing at times, depending. I think it's a nice ramp up for the day of voiceover, you know? Gotcha. Yeah, I'm finding that, especially in audio description narration, that performance that you're talking about, you talked about talking to a member of the blind or low vision community, that all our work, it's like we're talking to someone. That helps bring it off the page. There are a lot of times where I'm sure you've heard some amateur voiceover, whether it's an audio book that might be done kind of not in the way that you can listen to for more than 10 seconds because you want to pull your hair out. Or mm -hmm. maybe it's yeah. like there's something about bringing those words to life that is a skill that comes with practice and with mm -hmm. training and with, with skills. And it sounds like when you hear a line that you've said, and it's like, you know what, I want to let me take that a little different direction. I think I hear it a little differently that that kind of decision making can really impact the story that's being told on screen. Yeah, I agree. It kind of helps with your self-direction a little bit too, because it's like, I could take that again. You're kind of like in there, you're the director and engineer in there when you're operating this, depending on what studio you're submitting to and you know what system they're using or if you're using your own. So you're kind of working at all aspects. So you're kind of having this live session dialogue with yourself as you're recording. <laughs> that's kind of how I see uh, it. You know, it's very kind of in your head. I don't know if you feel that way too, <laughs> you know, when you're recording. <laughs> it's all different. Like like you said, there's each each company has their own approach. And it sounds like going back to what you said earlier about the warm up, I find that my best sweet spot, if I do have a choice, which is pretty rare, but if I do have a choice at the time of day to be able to deliver something, I find that 
if I get into my booth in the afternoon, that is really a good time. The morning, I'm like, I could be too jacked up on coffee or it sounds like I need coffee. Or at the end of the day, I'm just burned out and I need to chill out. For me, that afternoon time was a real surprise because I thought I was a morning person and I'm not. I'm like, yeah. if I have a choice, I'll do the afternoon. But if I'm being directed, then I think you've implied this. It's a whole different story. Have you had audio description that you've been directed at during a session or does most of your work happen where you get a script and you get the production and the production video and you deliver? The work I've done in audio description has come post pandemic. So I didn't get a chance to get in studio and work with anyone prior. So it's all been remote for me. Get the script, get the video and plug and play, you know. <laughs> Does the production audio that you're listening to from the original film or the original TV series, does that impact your performance? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Because you get different genres of content. I've been doing a lot of documentaries lately, so it's a lot more straight and narrow compared to like a comedy where, you know, you got to be upbeat or an animation or something like that. So how you inflect definitely changes based on the type of show or movie you're getting for sure. Gotcha. And you do make a difference uh, for each of the genres and each of the scenes, it sounds like. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, subtle, you know, you still don't want to overpower the scene, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but something's there. It's not something's like it's there. Just, yeah, the it, nuance is there. Yeah. You're not just reading words off of a page. Into exactly. A yeah. When I was first starting out, you know, you're kind of trying to take it all in. And my first few projects were UN style dubbing. Oh, the UN style dubbing. Yeah. So I was, you know, playing the characters. It actually kind of helped a lot to get me in because it was foreign dubs and it was a lot of prompts. So it was a good precursor to get me in the rhythm of it. And then audio description, you're dialed back a little bit. You're obviously not performance based, you know, you're dialed back. So it was kind of a nice transition. You talked about UN dubbing. Do you do dubbing for films and TV shows as well? I do. Yeah. I've done a couple live action and then I did one anime dub which was a lot of fun. Very cool. Do you find that there's a space in audio description for that kind of work? I know you mentioned UN dubbing, but kind of setting you up here. I have an opinion <laughs> that okay, <yeah. laughs> the work that you and other dubbing actors do really fits well with audio description, particularly when there's a lot of voices that our audiences deserve that immersive experience as much as a sighted person gets that immersive experience through the skills that you bring as a dub talent. And it seems like dubbing actors can bring audio description to life in a similar way. They're valid and great opinion. <laughs> I think so. A lot of people don't know this. When you do sessions, unless you're a main character, you're doing several different characters when you go in to do dubbing sessions. So you kind of have to have that improv sort of background because they kind of throw all these characters at you. It's like, oh, you're going to be a little boy. You're going to be a grandpa. You're going to be this. You're going to, you know, obviously within your range, but still like they choose at random and you don't get to read the script beforehand most times. So you're right in it. Yeah, I think that can help when you get an AD script that's UN style. You kind of already have that sort of mentality going in for sure. Sure. And I guess one of the differences too, just to let our audiences know, is that when you're doing the dubbing, the original voice is wiped out and replaced. And then in audio description, we still hear the voice, but you're kind of chasing it a little after, hence the UN. It's like everyone can still hear the actor that's not speaking, in this case, English, in a different language. And so you can hear the inflection and you can hear the intensity or the uh, what's happening from their emotional perspective. And you're kind of chasing that to kind of allow that to happen. So I guess that's a fair distinction between the two live action dubbing and then the UN style that AD does. Yeah, yeah, definitely. If you don't mind me putting you on the spot, as little detail or as much detail as you feel comfortable sharing, could I ask you a challenge that you've had in audio description that you're really proud of how you overcame it? Heavy procrastinating. <laughs> Last minute, you get a big project that a lot of prompts that's due the next day and they're on a tight deadline and you decided to do other things over the weekend. <laughs> And you got to pull an all-nighter, and it is, whoo, <laughs> especially, you know, early. I mean, you're a pro. You've been at this for a long time, but I'm sure you have stories, too. This is really my first year doing this. I'm coming up on a year. I had a project that I did that actually was nominated for an Oscar, which was kind of cool. <laughs> an Oscar. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, documentary. It was challenging because it was one of those projects where there's a lot of images. You have to describe all the images. There's a lot of silence in between too. So it's basically you and this project. The music's very limited. 
So you have to really take your time almost with it, but then you got to finish the project. So <laughs> can't take too much time. I think that was challenging where it's like there's a lot of prompts and a lot to cover in a short amount of time. And so that was crazy to kind of do firsthand. And then I had another project that I did relatively recently that was a crazy amount of prompts. And even my coordinator was like, what did they give you? <laughs> like, because it took days to do, like, it was a lot. And it was pretty thick amount of dialogue, too. But I push through. I try not to have that sort of victim mindset. I really try to give my best foot forward. I've worked in the industry a long time. I worked on set for a long time behind the camera. I learned that I don't want to be the crybaby out there like, oh, I can't do this. And why would you give me such a, no, I'm going to do the project. And if they can help me out in the end, which they did, it worked out. I love it. I love hearing that. I got two follow-ups if I could. You would use the word procrastination, but you also said short turnaround time. This is not a blame thing. This is not a victim thing, but just the circumstances of some of these projects that the clients, that the people who hire us get, <laughs> we get hired by somebody, but they get hired by somebody. And that somebody usually doesn't have enough time. And they're like, hey, we need this right now. And so everybody just scrambles, scrambles, scrambles. So I heard you say procrastination, but in this context, it sounds like the system in this case, you know, sometimes is actually genuinely rushed. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. There is some interesting timetables with these projects <laughs> that isn't even procrastination. And I love what you said earlier about working behind the scenes on camera. Mm -hmm. There is something about that experience of working in the film industry, working in the TV industry, that there is something about that entertainment industry experience that builds up some soft skills. You had said, <laughs> don't play the victim and do the job that you're asked to and find a way to do it. Yeah. There is an element of creativity to being able to say, oh, gosh, you know, I got some problems, but can I solve this or do I need help to solve this? That that kind of thoughtful mindset is definitely a skill that you can build up. And it sounds like you're actually still using that in AD. Yeah, absolutely. You know, same industry, just different parts. So yeah, I think it served me well so far since I started implementing it. Just going to keep with that. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. You've been working in the industry of audio description now since the last year. Where do you want in your dream world to see audio description narration headed? Oh, man. I mean, it's expanded so much. I want to thank you, first off, for really bringing this to the voiceover community the way you have. I think it's been really awesome to find this sort of niche in voiceover. Just say that. <laughs> you know, hopefully to video games, and there's so many avenues that this can go. And it's great to hear it being used in commercials now and a lot more streaming services. And I love how vocal the blind and low vision community is about where they want to see it, too. So I think reading about that has been really awesome to see them kind of nudging everybody. <laughs> yes. Yeah, like video games and things like that, I think would be great to see. And I know people now that don't even have low vision or aren't even blind that actually like putting the audio description track on. Oh, yeah. On my commute, I listen to AD. It's like the old time radio plays. It's like yeah. a, a really cool immersive podcast. It's already built in. My commute time has been with people like yourself or others that I can listen to. It makes a difference. These are stories being told in a way that maintains the story that the filmmakers want. Yeah. And by the way, video games are becoming so much more accessible, not only for all kinds of disability, but also when it comes to audio description. There's several prominent blind gamers that have talked about some of the work that they've done in contributing to make sure that AD is included and how it's included. And they're literally guiding the process in the same way that audio description in film and TV is used, use the word vocal that, you know, the irony there, <laughs> it's like they're speaking up and we're speaking based on how they're speaking up. That connection, you'd started off talking about Ron Howard, Arrested Development, connecting to the story that there's also a connection to our audience that really makes a difference and it helps the industry and it grows the industry in a way that it needs to grow instead of just checking the box where things need to go. Yeah. And they really support us too. They want human narrators, and which is huge right now with this whole AI thing going on, to have a community that's not our own, obviously, supporting us and championing human narrators is like really cool. <laughs> Thank you to, to everyone that does support us. Zach, is there anything else you'd like to share with us? I'd like to, you know, shout out to a couple people. In this journey, you don't do it alone. You learn from a lot of people, and I wouldn't be here without these people, so I really want to shout out to them. First, Sophia Cruz. I did her voiceover class, and I've worked with her for many years now. She was a major influence on me. I saw her kind of start out, and I know she took a course with you at one point, and she's been a real guide for me in my career. 
So I definitely want to shout out to her and her winning in voiceover course. Dave Wallace has been a good friend. He's the first person that actually told me about audio description. So I kind of saw him sort of start out taking it too. I remember when he took your class as well. So he's been a big help and just influence over the years, just in my career. And even before when I was not even doing voiceover, he always made me feel a part of the community. And then Court Soto, who helped me kind of get to where I'm at right now. I've known him for 10 years, even before audio description, and found out that we were both working. I was working in voiceover. He was writing. He kind of helped me get to where I'm at as well. Those three for sure. Can't speak highly enough about them. How can we follow you online or social media, websites, et cetera? You can find me at Zach Zeidman VO. I'm on Instagram. I'm also on LinkedIn, Zach Zeidman, and Twitter, also Zach Zeidman VO. And IMDb on there too. Sounds good. Thanks so much for joining us, Zach.